Hey everybody, Ken Walsky here, checking in with another one of our hashtag Star Trek Picard discussions videos. Today we are going to be talking about some of my top questions that are kind of going on inside of the Star Trek Picard season. And this doesn't include theories, this is just things that have kind of cropped up from the first three episodes as we kind of jaunt into the galaxy to go and save Soji. And I want to go ahead and kind of recap some of them, provide some theories and inputs on them, and then also just lay a few of them out there because I honestly don't have any ideas about the majority of these. But I do want to go ahead and get them all out there to go ahead and get some of your ideas so that I can steal them and put them in my videos. That's the plan! Okay, so the first one is Dr. Girardi, a.k.a. Agnes, is in fact a double agent of some type. Now, we do know that she met up with Commodore O outside of the Daystrom Institute in Okinawa, and that she asked her about her interactions with Picard, and then she magically appears at the Chateau later on, saving Picard and the two Romulan Tal Shiar agents that support him, Laris and Jatban. And we don't quite know too much more about their conversation. However, there was a preview trailer that we saw many moons ago that showed Agnes being mind-melded with from what appeared to be either a Romulan or a Vulcan. Now we do know that that particular person is in fact Commodore O. Now does that mean that O just knows more information than Dr. Dorati thinks that she told her? Or does it mean that she's being controlled by her in some form or fashion? It's not quite clear how that's kind of working because it's not even as if Do Commodore O doesn't already know about the other sister, Soji, because she's clearly in the cahoots with the Zatvash who are doing the other mission. She even tells her in the previous episode to stay on mission. So there's obviously something else going on, maybe something about Bruce Maddox that she didn't learn, or maybe there is some kind of mind control thing there. But the whole situation with Dr. Girardi is definitely something that is on my mind. The next thing I want to go ahead and talk about, and these are two really strange things that I don't think a lot of people are honestly talking about all that much, but there was a strange stuffed animal on Soji's bed, and also Soji has a white streak inside of her hair. Now, I have no explanation as to why either one of these things exist. I kind of understand the idea of maybe having streak in her hair to kind of differentiate, you know, differentiate herself from her sister, but... That brings up a whole line of questions about how much of their backstory is actually real or what isn't or any of that weird stuff. But I did want to just call note to both of those things. I have noticed that the stuffed animal was there, and I don't think that it was there just to be cutesy because it feels like, based off of the attention to detail they've had so far in this season, it doesn't seem like they would have just stuck that bear in there for no reason. Another thing that I want to go ahead and talk about, which is something I honestly forgot to say in my review of episode 3, even though it was in my script, but whatever. But it was the fact that Soji's little badge goes green. And if you remember, Mohawk Romulan said, if it goes green, run. Which kind of implies that something crazy bad is going to happen, the boar going to attack or something. But it flashes green very, very quickly, and nobody calls attention to it, whether nobody sees it or what. But And so far, no one has said anything about it. But it did definitely flash green very, very briefly as she was touching Ramda's hand and then she freaks out and says you're the, the destroyer and you're the craziest person ever and all that stuff like that but I did notice it why is still unclear Another big mystery we got to talk about is why the A500s, which are those Soong style androids, went crazy to begin with I do think based off of what we saw especially at the beginning of this episode you actually see like a like a hacking code thing kind of happening in their iris of their eyes, and you can kind of see some kind of codes kind of passing by. So I think these, these you know, these androids were hacked to do something rather specific. Who hacked them, what their overall purpose was, other than to destroy the fleet uh, that was above Mars and stop the Romulan, you know, kind of, you know, rescue, but why they did that, what was their real motivation for doing that is still super unclear. So that is definitely one of the other really big questions kind of going on in this season so far. Another one kind of related to the A500s is we've already alluded to this in this episode that Rafi seems to be of the belief that someone with inside of Starfleet Command allowed the, you know, A500s to get hacked and for the attack on Mars to kind of go forward. Now, obviously, all signs kind of point to Commodore O, but that could also be just a misdirection, and it could be somebody else that we haven't even seen yet, or perhaps it even is Admiral Clancy in some regards, but we're not quite sure yet. Another big mystery that we're having right now is what is the true mission of Narek and the Zat 
Vosh. Now, we know the Zot Vosh, based on what we've been told inside of, you know, the storyline of the show, is that they dislike synthetic life. They have not explained why they dislike synthetic life. It's just they hate all synthetic life. And I assume we'll kind of figure that out at some point during the show. My current working theory is that the Zot Vosh accidentally created the Borg a really long time ago, and they've been trying to stop all types of sentient cybernetic life forms to kind of take over, and they're trying to prevent that from happening, and they're trying to cover up their mistake of the past. That's just a working theory, though. It's a big guess. But what they're doing with you know, Soji, what they wanted with Dodge, what they want with any of these sentient AIs, and what their ultimate goal is, is still very much a mystery to me, and I think most of us watching it, which is great, it's just, that is one of the larger questions as to what really are they doing? We know Narek's focus is to gain the trust of Soji so that she'll fall in love with him and then kind of disclose some information to him, but why they want that information is still very, very much a mystery. Speaking of mysteries, we also need to find out what the deal is with Bruce Maddox. We believe that he's on this place called Free Cloud, which kind of looks like some kind of weird casino planet based off of this advertisement that came out of the code. I don't know if that's going to be true or not, but we don't know what's going on with Bruce Maddox. What has happened to him after the Mars attack? Apparently he just left the Daystrom Institute and went off and did his own things. The all evidence is kind of pointing to the fact that he's the one that created Dodge and Soji, which I think is still going to be accurate, but why he did that, how long it took him, and what kind of mysteries were surrounding his creation of Dawson Soji are still very, very much, uh, you know, up, left up to the open. I think that when Soji and Dodge both contact their mother, and I put that in big quotations, I think the mother is probably Bruce Maddox, you know, projecting himself as a female motherly figure talking to them, or that it's a, you know, EMH type program where, because we're seeing a lot of holograms in the show, that it's a hologram that was designed to try to guide and assist Soji and Dodge. They're kind of walking around in the real world outside of Bruce Maddox's lab where he created them, but I don't think that person is a real person, her mom, and I don't know what Maddox has to do with that particular individual or what it was that he was doing that led up to their creation. So that's one of the larger mysteries that I think the crew and the team of Picard and his motley crew, as they're calling him, are kind of trying to figure out as to what is going on with Bruce Maddox and then to try to figure out where Soji's, you know, is at, you know, Dodge's sister. Speaking of all of that, the other giant mystery, I think is probably the mystery of the entire show at this particular point, which is what is the deal with Dodge and Soji? Are they just androids? Are they Data's kind of relatives, daughters type thing? Are they Lore's kind of daughters? Maybe they used Lore's body instead of Data that we didn't know about. What are they doing with it? You know, Dodge and Soji, where did they come from? What's their connection to this Borg cube? Why did Ramda and the rest of the Romulans that were reclaimed from being, you know, former Borg freak out when she touched her and they kept calling her the destroyer of worlds what is the deal here what is going on are they just saying she's the destroyer of worlds and as a kind of way of saying that she's going to be a threat obviously the easiest answer is that she's some kind of borg queen but that feels like almost like of a too easy of an answer so it feels like they're kind of trying to direct us into the destroyer of the worlds concept being like she's going to be like this assimilator queen but it could actually have another meeting altogether which maybe she's going to you know basically give life to sentient life forms and the zot Bosch would view that as destroying worlds if there was both humans and sentient androids living together coexisting you know cats and dogs raining down whatever it is you know i, I i'm wondering if that's what they mean by destroyer of worlds and not not the literal destruction of worlds because I don't know. It kind of seems like that's a very easy thing to kind of get. Like they're on a cube. She's freaking out. You, I saw. I remember you. I'm just says, and it's like, okay, sure. She's probably a Borg queen or some type of Borg individual. But that seems like almost a too simple of an answer. And I feel like they're going to give us something a little bit juicier than that. Okay, so that was a really quick little video. Those were my top, you know, big questions of what's going on currently within the plot of Star Trek Picard. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of other theories kind of attached to what else could be going on in the season. You know, what's Seven up to? Who are the, the Rangers that she's with? What are Riker and Troy going to be doing? Are we going to see Worf? Is the Enterprise E or, you know, F potentially going to show up? Are we going to see the, the Verity at some point? There's a lot of other bigger questions kind of within the show, but... From the episodes, the three episodes that we have, the plot has expanded outwards, and all of these things that I listed just previously are the questions that have kind of come up from the different plot elements. And now, I cannot wait to see how all of these things kind of play out over the next seven episodes. 
But I am absolutely curious as to what you guys think about some of these theories. Throw up your concepts down below. I'm very, very interested in what you guys think about this whole situation with Soji and the Borg Cube and Ramda and how that all kind of played out. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about that and maybe even why her badge glowed green. My current theory is that it wasn't because she touched Ramda, who was the Romulan. It had something to do with her. And I don't know why, but that's just a gut feeling right now. But I'm curious to hear what you guys and gals think. So get your comments down below and we'll go ahead and get the conversation started. Live long and prosper, my trickies.